Hello people, this is Jay Koshal, writer, motivation speaker and life coach. And today we're going to start a brand new series on a topic that I have written a lot of articles on, including a book, on a topic that has received over 3 million views on Quora, the knowledge sharing platform, the blogging, the writing platform. And off late, you know, I have been... Uh, Kind of reviewing what content should I focus on more over the next few months because I've started a lot of different series on this channel. I'm a writer, motivational speaker, and life coach. And so, you know, there are a lot of different fields, a lot of different areas of self inquiry, spirituality, self development that, you know, I specialize in that I use in my life coaching practice and that I think that people should know from the perspective of personal development, self-development, self-improvement, personal growth, spiritual growth. Okay, so Vedic Astrology is where I have received the most attention, the most uh, recognition in the past four or five years since I've started doing this. So for the next few months, I guess probably for the next year or so, I'm going to be focusing the most on Vedic Astrology. I'm going to be making videos a lot more often than I have been doing currently. And I'm going to be focusing on uh, the series that I make under the Vedic Astrology segment a lot more. I'm going to be doing the other things as well. You know, I plan to revive the podcast that I started, Top Coach. I, revive, I plan to, you know, uh, make more videos in terms of the vlog, the life coaching vlog uh, that I've created, Live Limitless and, you know, other series like that. But for the near term, the focus is going to be the most on uh, Rahu and Ketu. Okay. So this first episode is about understanding what the nodes of the moon, Rahu and Ketu are. Okay. From the perspective of Vedic astrology, from the perspective of self-development, why are they important? So... Rahu and Ketu are actually the north and the south node of the moon. These are not even fully bodied planets. I mean, they don't exist out there. Okay, these are eclipse points. And the reason that they're very important is because they point out towards our soul's journey in this lifetime and its level of progress in a particular area or a set of areas through previous lifetimes okay so Rahu is the north node of the moon it is denoted by the head Ketu is the south node of the moon it is denoted by the uh, body there's a complete story around it which I'm going to be exploring in my book decoding Rahu the paperback is coming out pretty soon pretty soon most probably by September it keeps getting delayed because, uh, you know, I came out with a previous book, Decoding Rahu, uh, on Amazon. And unfortunately, despite publishing on Amazon, uh, and despite the book uh, selling a lot of copies, you know, the one reason that I published there was to ensure that uh, there is no copying, that there is no, you know, illegal distribution of that book. But uh, unfortunately, that was not my experience, so I took it off from there. And I'm working on the paperback right now. In case you want to check out the various articles that I've written about Rahu, you know, the link's given in the description box. You can, you know, go check it out. But uh, from the perspective of this video, you know, the only thing that we're going to talk about here right now in the first video is understanding what Rahu and Ketu are. Okay. So Rahu is the north node of the moon that shows what the soul is here to do in this lifetime. Rahu shows where your soul has a natural knack, where you have a natural inclination to move towards in this lifetime. You don't have the experience in this area. This is new for your soul. This is where you're needing to develop in this lifetime. But this is where if you show up, if you just show up, you will have the kind of success that Ketu is never going to give you. What is Ketu now? Ketu denotes wherever Ketu sits in your chart. Ketu shows us the area of life that your soul has the most experience with. What your soul is the most at home with. What your soul has the most uh, development 
in the area of okay k2 area in the chart the house that k2 sits in the side of the chart of k2 you know if you were to take Rahu and k2 and divide the chart into two portions so the side that falls on the k2 end of uh, your chart is usually the set of uh, skills the set of life areas where you are naturally good at it may not give you the kind of satisfaction that you want it may not give you the kind of fulfillment that you seek obviously because you know this is something that your soul has been doing over and over and over again this is something that your soul has perfected over many lifetimes and so this is an area that you are supposed to outgrow in this particular lifetime and move towards Rahu which is your future Ketu is your past. It's not that your past, uh, you know, that your past doesn't have any um, bearing on your life. It obviously does, right? It shows what you're naturally good at. It shows what you have a natural understanding of. Okay, for example, let's say you have Ketu in the fourth house. You have a natural understanding of uh, domestic affairs. You have a natural understanding of home, family, security. This is what your natural inclination is. But Rahu in the 10th, let's say, if you have Ketu in the 4th, you have Rahu in the 10th. Why? Because Rahu and Ketu are always 180 degree opposite to each other. Okay? So Rahu in the 10th is what is going to show you where you can grow the most. Rahu in the 10th, let's say, can show a person who can achieve great heights in their career, who can achieve great things. Okay? That's because that is what your soul has manifested in this lifetime to accomplish, to experience. Now, there's a backstory related to it. The backstory is that Sankhya Shastra, okay, Sankhya Shastra developed by Kapil Muni, an ancient sage. There's a complete story about him as well. You know, I'm going to discuss it later on, but to shorten it up. Kapil Muni was the sage who developed this philosophy or let's say who stumbled upon this reality of manifestation which talks about the process of the evolution of the soul through the cycle of birth and death. So the Sankhya Shastra talks about why a soul manifests in this lifetime, how it grows and how it searches for and manifests into a body. So the way that they describe it is, you know, when you do not have a body, you still exist in the form of mana buddhi ahankar. Your mind, your intellect and your ego. So the ego is not a bad thing. Ego is related to who you are. Ego is related to, let's say, you know, your self-identity. So the mana, the buddhi and the ahankar, they search out the right body, the right physical vessel. The right story attached to that physical vessel which is what we call life which will give the soul the required journey of development through the life and if we were to look at it that way everything that you're going through and this is actually a belief which is also corroborated which is also talked about in Mahayana Buddhism Okay, in fact, this is a belief that you will also find, manif uh, you know, talked about a lot in, um, in the Upanishads as well. And this belief is that when you are born in this lifetime and on this material plane, you are fully aware of what you're getting yourself into. It's a conscious decision of manifestation into this body you're choosing the set of experiences that you are supposed to go through in order to develop because the final aim why we are here is to develop is to grow so that we can achieve moksha so that we can transcend the cycle of death and rebirth 
and merge back into the divine, back into the source. Okay? So, Rahu shows you where that development has to be made in this lifetime. And Ketu shows you where you're coming from. Ketu shows you what you're good at, what you've mastered, what can you use to move towards Rahu. And so, if you're confused in life, if you're confused about what to do, what's my purpose, I'm so confused, why do I always, you know, keep encountering problems in a particular area of my life, just look at your Rahu Ketu placement. That's it. You don't need anything else in life. If you can just look at your Rahu Ketu placement, make sense of it, and receive the right coaching to navigate the areas of life that are denoted by Rahu, okay, you can become successful. That's all that it takes. And obviously, you know, I'm going to uh, shed a lot more light on this through as we progress in the series. A lot of you who are familiar with my writing would already know it. Um, but this is where we begin with the understanding that if you can make sense of where Rahu is in your chart, if you can make sense of where Ketu is in your chart, and you can understand, if you can reconcile yourself with the reality that everything is exactly how your soul chose it to be before manifesting in this physical body. If you can do this, if you can reconcile yourself with this fact, this reality, this philosophy, this idea, this concept, and then related with your Rahu Ketu placement, you can do anything in life. Anything. Because you'll know. Because you'll know. You know, let's say you have uh, Rahu in the seventh house, you go through a lot of divorces, you go through a lot of bad breakups, bad relationships, quarrels, all sorts of conflicts and relationships. You, you will know, okay, this is where my Rahu is in the seventh house. <laughs> I am learning about relationships in this lifetime. It's not what I am the best at. I'm learning. But the magic about Rahu is, if you show up, all you have to do is you have to show up. You have to let go of the fear and just show up. If you can do that, Rahu is where you will have the most success in life. And so this is at a huge divergence from what, you know, a lot of these traditional astrologers, uh, oh my God, the kind of comments that I have to, you know, sometimes um, censor. <laughs> that I receive on these articles on this novel thought that I have towards using Vedic astrology for personal development. Oh my God. Because, you know, a lot of traditional astrologers in India and abroad, more so in India, they're of the view that your destiny is locked, that Rahu is where you'll get most trouble, that Ketu is where you will get the most success, stick towards Ketu, live a happy life, and do a Shanti for Rahu. Shanti means, you know, silence Rahu. Shanti part, you know, anytime you go into Rahu Madasha, you go to some Pandiji and you say, you know, Pandiji, I'm going to Rahu Madasha, what to do? He'll be like, do a Shanti part. You know, what is a Shanti part? We'll talk about that later, but I'm just going to touch, it, touch upon it here. Is that Shanti part means silencing the forward karma that you've come into this life with Rahu. You're silencing it through mantras. And that's why you should never do it. No matter how bad your Rahu Mahadasha is going, all you need is coaching in that particular area. And that can be through somebody who is really good in that area. Because deep down we all know what we are here to do. It's when we start failing that we start changing our minds. Right? And on that note, I'm going to wrap up the first episode of this series. We're going to jump right to Rahu in the first house. Thank you so much. Let me know in the comments how you uh, like this video, what you thought. No hate comments, please. I'm going to delete. I'm going to block you right away. You know, I, I, I apologize. I'm, I'm usually a very loving sort of a person, you know, but I'm just saying this is, this is how I'm going to be dealing with, um, you know, any sort of negativity on this series because this is, uh, this is serious stuff, man. This stuff can actually help you change your life. This stuff can actually help someone who's struggling to change their life. They're unable to do. You know, this is something that can actually help them. Okay? Yeah. And if you enjoy this uh, video, please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to this channel so that you can stay abreast of all the wonderful content I post. 
this entire series and push the bell icon so that you can be more notified every single time I post. I'm going to be posting a lot over the period of the next few weeks. So uh, see you in the next video. Take care. Hurry home.